Well hello again. Today's walk starts right here at Athona and there's our part completed new studio. The builders actually began returning last week, They're carefully uh, keeping their social distance and so on, so we're hoping it will be completed before too long. Swinging round towards the south, it's the month of May and here's a May tree. This hawthorn here was planted in memory of Afra Brett, beloved member of the community for many years. And that's not where we're ending, we're heading today towards the sea. And there's Robin sitting waiting because she's going to come on the walk with me. We'll see you in a minute, we're going down first through Athona's little band of woodland. And we are down through the dappled sunlight in the woods. It's a beloved walk, for, a favourite walk for many people who come and stay at Athona, of course. For many years there wasn't a path down here because the land below our woods was owned by a hostile farmer who really didn't like anybody walking across his fields. And so to get from Athona to the sea in those days you had to walk down the road. And then down the track at Cogden Beach. But now there's a permissive path right past our woods and this whole area is owned by the National Trust. So we turn right here and along the top of this meadow. One thing we pass on this walk is a pillbox left over from the Second World War. There it is. It's not the only one near here but some of the others are well hidden under scrub. Of course this whole area was prime invasion territory potentially during the war and therefore the community living in Atathona at the time, uh, it wasn't the Athona community, it was the previous uh, group of women known as the White Ladies informally, um, they actually had much of their land and their buildings taken over by the army at that time because the area had to be garrisoned to protect the coast. Over that stile we turn left and head downhill directly towards the sea. Now this path was very soggy until just a couple of weeks ago. Much more reasonable now. Pausing to turn around, just take a look back towards one of our neighbours' houses and I wonder if you can hear the skylark. It's an almost constant song as you walk across these meadows. There's another one just rising against the white cloud. There he is. Down the bottom of the hill now there's this stile to cross. And then between us and the beach you can see the dry reeds from last year. The young green reeds just beginning to grow up above water level. Mainly still the brown of the old dry ones. I'm going to cross this stile and then turn right along the southwest coast path. It's still a little bit early in the year, just a little bit early for orchids to be in bloom. I was watching for them in case. But here is some ladies' smock. There we are. Lovely pale pink flower. Needs to be somewhere a bit boggy for it to thrive. Three, four minutes walking, get to this point where we meet the old concrete track coming down from the coast road. The National Trust car park up there is closed at the moment, of course, so hardly anybody visiting the beach in that way. But we're right behind the beach now and can get through to it. The reed bed in our way. High up the beach, and I've stopped to have a look at a couple of the distinctive plants. Here, there's thrift coming into bloom. It used to be one of my mum's favourites. 
and then just over here we have sea kale. It's one of the best places in England for sea kale on this beach. Very salty if you eat it, I believe. So if you do forage, then keep it to a minimum. Leave plenty to continue growing. So turning from the thrift and the sea kale now towards the sea itself. And uh, the wind on the mic won't be too loud for you. tides recently, exposing more sand than I've seen here for years, but today I've caught it fairly close to high tide. I'll switch off now and uh, wait until I'm sat right at the water's edge. Well this is the place and the sound that some of you have been specially requesting on these walks. I don't blame you. And there's the Chesil Beach stretching off towards the Isle of Portland, the peninsula of Portland. sound of the waves gently moving trillions of tiny pebbles. I'll swivel around 360 degrees, slowly, slowly. I'm in danger of getting my toes wet here if there's a bigger wave all of a sudden. That way towards West Bay, Bridport, closer to us, the Hive Beach Cafe, beloved. Many people for their cream teas. The love seems to be my, my word today, I've got a bit stuck on that. There's a higher part of the beach. The Thona itself coming into view among the trees up there. back to the view looking east. It's a one-way walk today, so we're going to leave it here. Just let the sound of the waves finish the video. <laughs>